of deciding what is the best cut for each individual gemstone. And just to give you the end, <laughs> the end story to start out with, it's not the the same cut is not the best for all gemstones. Like the round brilliant cut, for example, is the most popular with diamonds. Well, the round brilliant cut is not the best cut for every single gemstone for a whole lot of reasons. Okay, so now moving along here, hopefully not too fast, but now I'd like to talk about some cutting theory. And here we have two circles. Ask yourself which looks brighter, the circle on the left or the circle on the right? And once you've answered that question for yourself, I'll tell you that to a machine, machine measurement, these are equally bright because they're 50% white and 50% black. The only difference is the white is split from the black in this circle. And in this circle, the white and the black are mixed together. The human eye sees contrast as being something with contrast as being brighter. So even though to a machine measuring system, these would be equally bright, to the human eye, this looks brighter and to almost everybody. And what impact does that have on cutting? Here we have another example. Which of these circles look brighter to you? Almost everyone will say the circle on the right looks brighter. However, once again, they have the exact same percentage of light and dark, both of these circles. The only difference is the contrast pattern. So how does this relate to gem cutting? In planning a gemstone cut, something we consider and something we play with is contrast pattern. Because two gems which return the same amount of light to the eye, if one of them has a more complex contrast pattern, this is a more complex contrast pattern relative to this. If these were gemstones, people would say, oh, that one's brighter, but they're equally bright. The difference is the contrast pattern. So this is something we play around with in cut planning is contrast pattern. And we'll get more into that in a little bit, like right now. <laughs> so these, I possibly could have chose a better, chosen a better, example, but on the left and on the right are two stones. And this is going to depend a lot upon your screen resolution and things like that. And this one, I didn't get quite as much of the dark reflection in the photography, so it doesn't show it what I'm trying, aiming at quite as well as I would like to. But you can see that this has an extremely complex contrast pattern. There are tons of little lighter and darker lines throughout the gems. This is a concave faceted cut. Why does it have these little, many, many little lines? It's because a concave surface acts like a mirror. And so it reflects from a whole array of different places. And each of these concave facets is therefore reflecting a ton of different concave facets on the opposite side and it makes this very complex contrast pattern, which is one of the big reasons why most people see concave fasted stones as looking brighter or more brilliant than a flat fasted stone. It is not necessarily because more light is coming out of it. And a lot of it has to do with the contrast pattern. This is a very well cut flat fasted stones because the uh, dark is darker. Some people will see this as being brighter, but in person, almost everybody will think the stone on the left is brighter because the, in the same viewing environment, 
Um, our lighting setup, I think, was a little different between the two photos. The same viewing environment, this contrast pattern is more complex. Then comes the question, as a cutter, is brighter always better? And to illustrate that, we have a Marquise cut aquamarine. Um, almost all of the gems I'm showing are our cutting. This is also a gem I cut. And as you will see, the gem has a lighter cutter color in the middle and deeper color on the ends. And marquees many times show what is called a bow tie. And not everybody likes bow ties in their gemstones. And usually, for those people who don't like this contrast between the two different shades, most of the time when they complain to me, they're complaining about these lighter facets in the middle. And that's interesting because these lighter facets in the middle are the ones that are reflecting light much more efficiently. The light path is going in right here on the lower side, bouncing straight across the shortest direction to the other side and bouncing back out. That means that they have a relatively short light path. They're not traveling very far through the stone. They're going in, across, and back out. Whereas on the end of the stone, the, because of the curvature of the stone, the light path is different. The light tends to go in. Let's say it goes in here on this lower side. It bounces across the short direction of the stone. Then, because of the angle of the facet relative to the original facet, it bounces down the length of the stone. And then often it will bounce across and sometimes it'll leak as it will be reflected back. It just depends upon the angle of entry and a variety of other factors. But because of this longer light path, it collects a lot more color. And in an aquamarine and other light colored gemstones, you want to intensify color. So what I'm telling you is that this middle part with lighter color is brighter. It's more brilliant. But as far as value is concerned, an aquamarine with this deeper color is worth more. So as a cutter, brighter is not always better. More beautiful is better. And that's why many things go into making the right cut for the right gemstone. And as I said before, the right cut for the right gemstone is not always the same answer. There is no one size fits all. <clears throat> now, to illustrate the question of light path, I'm sure that almost everybody has noticed that as you see like a thick glass tabletop, if you look at it from the top, it looks colorless. But as you look at it from the edge, it will look greenish or bluish. And when I was a kid, I used to look at these and just ponder, why is that? Well, now I, now I know. The reason is the glass is very thin in this direction. So the light path is short. It doesn't pick up much color. The light doesn't have time to pick up a lot of the body, co body color of the glass. So even clear glass is light bluey green. However, when the light path or the line of sight is traveling the length of the glass, it picks up a lot, a lot more of the body color of, of the glass. And this same concept is what I was talking about with gemstones, with this aquamarine. The longer the light path, the more body color it picks up. And sometimes that can be um, messed with or influenced by cut. That is why, by the way, um, many fancy yellow, yellow diamonds you will see are cut in a radiant style cut. For example, it's not the most brilliant, but it has a longer light path or can have depending upon the cutting style. 
Um, on the same subject, and something else that it's interesting to know as gemstone connoisseurs or dealers in gemstones, or whatever you may happen to be, is light path also plays comes into play based on the size of the gemstone. This is a morganite that I cut, 175.37 carats. And this is another morganite I cut, 14.89 carats. Well, what do these have in common? Cutting style is relatively similar, not identical, but these are both cut from the exact same piece of rough. And the rough did not have color zoning. So the difference between this stone and this stone is entirely due to the size, or almost entirely due to the size. Because the bigger stone, the light is traveling further in. And that means that it picks up more color. And I cut a third stone from the same piece of rough, 3.09 carats. Now, if I showed you these two stones, this 309 and this 175, would you believe those were from the same piece of rough? I keep track of these things, and they were. So this is a factor of size, and it's interesting for many reasons. One reason is when you have a light colored gem or gems that tend to be light, like morganite, aquamarine, and gems like that, the smaller they are, the harder it is to find a deep color. I have lots of people, there's sort of a fad for the last number of years wanting to use morganite in engagement rings. I try to steer them towards sapphire because of durability. But they often want a small morganite that's dark in color. Well, that is really, really rare, much rarer, in fact, than a large morganite that's got strong color. And also, as a buyer, you may notice that if you were to find an equal colored morganite or aquamarine, for example, in a 15 carat stone and say a 200 carat stone, often the price per carat will either be the same, even though the bigger size is rarer, the color in the little one, if this one was the same color, would make it a rare piece of rough. And also, another factor is that the smaller one, a 15 carat stone, has a much wider clientele than a 200 carat stone. So in gems such as aquamarine and morganite, where you have 200, 300 carat stones, the large ones generally are not as expensive or either cheaper per carat or the same per carat as a smaller stone. And that's just an interesting factoid. If, of course, this were a Brazilian Paraíba <laughs> at 175 carats, it would be far more expensive than a smaller stone because of factors of rarity. But certain stones like morganite and aquamarine, for example, do tend to come in big sizes. Their crystals tend to come in big sizes. Um, another factor, which as a cutter I consider, is it's a reason why I don't cut, I don't saw certain pieces up, like aquamarine. Aquamarine sometimes comes out of this mine, the mine in this kilo and a half piece. It's this beautiful big crystal. And I say to the miner, you know, that's, it's often pretty clean. And I say, man, you know, if I cut a, 600 carat gemstone out of that, who's going to use it? It's going to be hard to sell. I say, well, you saw it up. Well, what happens when you saw it up? This is what happens. You lose a lot of color. So oftentimes it's a challenge when buying rough. You're buying, you think you're buying one color, but you're planning on sawing it up either because of inclusions or because it's not usable in the size it's in. Well, you end up with much lighter stones. And in other gems like garnet that tends to be dark, that's actually a good thing. You want it to lose color in many cases, but in aquamarine and morganite, that's not the case.